So if you're a shooter and you reload, you know just how deep we can dive into this rabbit hole of reloading and chase marginal gains until, I don't know where that hole ends, but it's infinite by my, <laughs> by my experience. So that's not my goal with today's video. My goal with this video is to show you guys sort of my seven steps, if you will, how I take fire brass and get them all the way ready to go to a match. So. Plain and simple, we're not gonna dive into super technical details at each step, it's literally just an overview of sort of my reloading process. So before we get going, a little bit of a housekeeping. Number one, reloading is dangerous, but the fact that you're here is wonderful because it means you're doing a little bit of homework. But you always want to consult like a reloading manual or your powder manufacturer's website to see if you're using the right starting charge, sort of what your maximum charges are. So if you think about it, we're making something very, very dangerous, dealing with incredible pressure right next to our face. So just make sure you're safe. The second thing is today's video is brought to us by MDT, Modular Driven Technologies. They've recently got a new website up. I'm shooting the ACC chassis as my sort of go-to precision rifle chassis. In fact, I recently did, I don't know, do you guys like this? Sort of a battle-worn blue paint job. It's cool, I don't know if it's me though. It took forever to do, so I'm probably gonna keep it for a little bit, but I'm probably not gonna stay long term. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys like it. I would have showed you some close-up shots. Yeah, it's it's cool, but it's yeah, it's blue. <laughs> so probably not gonna keep it. Anyway, so first thing we wanna do, okay, we're gonna come back from the range with dirty brass. Now it depends what kind of shooting you're doing, how dirty that brass is. If you're doing precision rifle stuff, like I do most of the time and where this brass comes from, chances are you're on the clock, you rack your bolt, the case went wherever it goes, falls in the dirt, you're running to your next position, you're stepping on it, you're diving on it, you're digging them out after the stage, it's a little bit dramatic, but that's literally how it goes sometimes. Um, and your cases are dirty. Now in one of our other operations, we are gonna bump the shoulders back by a thousandth of an inch. Okay, so you wanna work with something that's clean on the outside. Now having said that, if you're a long range shooter and you're literally racking your bolt, taking that round and putting it straight back into sort of your little ammo box, or you're a bench rest guy and that's what you're doing, then fine, you probably might not need to stain a steel tumble like we will. Anyway, today's video, as I said, is about the process not necessarily gonna go super into depth for every step. If you want a more in-depth sort of reloading how-to, highly recommend my online reloading course which is available down below. And if you use the code BUMP, you'll save 20%. So make sure you check that out too. So our number one step, and by the way, when I say steps, some of these things are sort of condensed into one. So step number one would involve getting our brass ready for annealing. So step number one, into the press, universal decapping die or a deep priming die as they're also known as. You're gonna pop out your spent primer and then we're gonna chuck our brass into a rotary tumbler with stainless steel media. Now I tumble my brass for two hours in hot water with a lemmy shine and clean green mix. In fact, in the past I've done a video on how to get super shiny brass, which is up here if you wanna check that out. So after the brass comes out, it's gonna go into my brass dryer if you don't like water spots and things like that, roll them out on a towel, just get rid of all the water on the outside. And then basically the brass dryer, or if your wife maybe has a food dehydrator, that's gonna work perfect. And I leave them generally overnight because the last thing you wanna do is start back up your reloading process and you might have a tiny bit of water or moisture in your cases. That's a recipe for a disaster. Well, it's a recipe for nothing happening because your brown's probably not gonna detonate if your primer got wet somewhere in the process. So after we dry them, we're gonna anneal them. Now I anneal using an AMP, an annealing made perfect Mark II machine. It is hands down the best annealing machine on the market because it can analyze your case. It's gonna heat the neck of the case up exactly to the right temperature if you use their Aztec mode. And basically what that does is for the guys that aren't familiar with annealing, every time brass, you work your brass, okay? It expands by shooting, because when you're firing the case, it's gonna hit the sides of your chamber, and the brass actually on a sort of molecular level is gonna get harder. And what the hardness does is it messes with your repeatability, your ability to set proper neck tensions, and basically what the annealing process does is 
You pop the guy in, you pull it out, and it changes your brass back to sort of its original. It sets the baseline, basically. So that's very important to anneal every time. With any process, if you want consistency, you need to do the same thing every time. So our next step is going to be to bump our shoulders back. So our brass is clean. I'm going to take a little bit of lube. I'm going to sort of go through this quickly because I just did a whole comprehensive video on how to set up your die properly, your full length die properly to bump your shoulders back by the required amount. That video is going to be up here. It is so important because if you're overworking your brass, eventually your brass is going to break and you're going to waste money buying brass when you shouldn't probably have needed to already. So make sure you set up that die correctly. So I'm going to bump my shoulders back by one thou. And then very importantly, I'm also going to trim my cases back. Okay, so I generally go 10 thousands under sort of what the Sami spec is for the case. And I'm going to check that every time. Probably if you do that, you can get away with shooting your cases about four to five times without having to trim quite a bit off there. So after I trim them, I'm also going to run them over sort of a chamfer and a deburr tool just to get rid of any sharp edges. I don't know if you've seen sometimes if you haven't done that and you see the bullet, it actually takes like a little ring of copper off the jacket on your bullet and that's not something you want to be doing. So chamfer and deburr after having trimmed them. Trimming sometimes also plays a role if you're trying to close your bolt. If your case has grown by too much, you will have trouble closing the bolt. So it's very important that you check the overall length of your case every now and again. Hopefully every time you reload them. Now the next thing I'm going to pay attention to is neck tension. I want consistent neck tension across the board on every single case. Because I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, if you're seating bullets sometimes and you're putting a bullet in, you feel, oh, press handle goes down nicely, press handle goes down nicely, and then every now and again you get one that's a little bit dodgy. That one you should put one side, don't shoot that. If you want to eliminate that and you make sure all your neck tension is the same, I highly recommend one of our APW Expander Mandel kits. These things are incredibly popular. We are shipping them globally, by the way. They're basically never in stock because you guys love them so much. It's been incredible. And the feedback we've gotten from you from that product has been off the page. It's really cool. So basically run all my cases through the mandrel. I use 1000s neck tension. So the mandrel is 1000 smaller than the bullet diameter. And that eliminates that, you know, every now and again, you get a dodgy one. The other really cool thing about that is it controls the inside diameter of your neck. Okay, so any imperfections and things gets pushed to the outside because the inside diameter is much more important than the outside diameter of your neck because that's what's actually hanging on to the bullet and giving you sort of that friction fit, which is what we basically refer to as neck tension. So you want to make sure they're all the same because that's going to play just as much as your powder charge going to play a big role when you see results downrange. Probably not so much in 300, 400 yards, that kind of thing, 500 meters. But when you're shooting out to a kilometer or stuff like that, it's going to start making a big difference there. So my next step is then to get rid of any excess lube. Now, sometimes if I'm loading in small batches, I literally just take a rag with some alcohol, 99% isopropyl alcohol, rub it down, run something through the neck if I'm doing 20 rounds or something like that. If I'm loading large volume like this, or my 223, which is five, 600 cases at a time, I'll just chuck them back into the tumbler with a sort of similar mix to the first time, run them for about an hour and then dry them out. Generally, when I'm doing that big volume, I'm loading all my cases in one go. So then it really doesn't matter for me if it takes another day to dry out or not, um, because I'm not gonna do everything in the same day. It's just too time consuming because loading that kind of bulk, I phase it out over multiple days to, or multiple weekends usually to get sort of everything loaded again, because it does, it's obviously a time consuming process, but really such a rewarding part of this hobby, you know, it's, if, if you shoot, you've always got some tinkering to do with something. And that's what's really lucky about this hobby. So then once everything is sort of back to square one, I'm going to seat my primers, okay, using my CPS, my competition priming seater from Primal Rights, especially for doing bulk. It's really quick. I've also done a review video on that. That piece of kit has grown on me so much. It is, it is a staple in my reloading process. It's really cool. Then I'm going to pop all my cases back into sort of my reloading tray. I'm going to powder charge all of them, visually inspect that I haven't sort of missed anything, look for anything that's funny, you know, easily. With a rifle, it's really difficult to double charge. The real danger for us here is using the wrong powder. So if you're using like a pistol powder or something in a rifle case, you're going to have a problem. Okay. But usually when you're double charging because you're multitasking or whatever or not paying attention, you'll see it doesn't drain from the funnel. So just check for things like that. But after all my cases have been charged with powder, I'm going to pop, visually check, 
powder, pop a bullet in and sort of put the bullets in all the way. And then it depends what kind of dye I'm using. If I'm using sort of an inline dye, I kind of have all the bullets because then it goes really quickly. Or if I'm using something like a single stage or the new zero press, I will kind of put the case in and then put a bullet on the top. And then I basically just seat most of my bullets. I shoot burgers now. I seat them 20 thousands off the lands usually and we're kind of off to the races. So that's really my process. So in a nutshell, primer out, clean it, anneal it, lube it, size it, expand it, trim it, clean all the lube off again, primer in, powder in, bullet 20 thou off the lands and you're off to the races. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. That is my reloading process. If you ask 20 shooters what their reloading process is, you're probably going to get 30 different answers. Use what works for you and discard what doesn't work for you. But all, most importantly, just be safe and be willing to maybe try a few things and figure out what works for you. That's kind of how I arrived to where I was. I did way more effort in the past of stuff, but I found like, you know, half the stuff I was doing is not needed. Like it wasn't needed for me to coat bullets and things like that anymore. I don't sort brass into different weights or measure bullets and weigh them and batch them. Oh, can I show me the hibri jibris? That was a bit of Afrikaans today. I got the heebity jeebities just by thinking of all those things. Guys, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what your process is, if you've got some advice for the guys down below in the comments. And again, my precision rifle reloading course for way more detail on every step is down below with exact die setups, how we measure our chamber, all of those kind of things we cover in the course. And you're not gonna regret it if you're new to reloading, it's gonna help you a ton. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. I've got a lot of reloading to do, so. I need to get to it. Bye.